Hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, you know, the interesting thing about my life is that not only have I had an NDE, which is a near-death experience, where I went to what's called heaven for about five years, but I've also been blessed, if you want to use that word, where I've been able to see ghosts all my life. So I do get a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between who goes to heaven and who stays earthbound? So that's what I want to explain tonight, okay? So I'm going to give some empirical evidence, which is the personal information and experiences that I've personally witnessed that gives evidence to what I'm going to talk about. And I'm also going to suggest as to um, what they can and can't do while they're in that plane of being either a ghost or a spirit. So, in a nutshell, what's the difference between a ghost and a spirit? Is that when we pass over, because we're all mortal, right? We've all got an end date. <laughs> so when that end date occurs, some of us go to heaven. These are the ones that we call spirits, okay? The ones who stay earthbound are what we call ghosts, okay? Now, I've had a lot of interaction with both ghosts and spirits. So let me just, in a nutshell, explain firstly what they can and can't do, okay? So when we go home to heaven, we have to remember up there there is no time, okay? Time is very important, it's very relevant for both ghosts and spirits. So first of all, with spirits, when we go home to what we call heaven, there's no time up there. So as someone asked me the other day, if my grandmother has reincarnated, how can she still pop in and see me? because I understand it because I was there. Even if we instantaneously reincarnate, there's still that split second, which could be 200 years here on earth. So even if our dearly loved grandmother passes away, she goes straight to heaven and reincarnates, she can still come in and pop in and see us, give us messages, let us know she's around, even if it's 10 years after she's died. Do you understand that one? <clears throat> so how does she come through? Spirits, first of all. How do they come through? If you look at people famously who do mediumship shows, because a medium, like I am a psychic medium, so let me just explain that bit first. I am a psychic because I know things, okay? Like I can go to someone's house and I know they've got a pink bathroom even before I walk through the doorway, okay? I know that their dog is 14 years old even before they tell me, okay? That sort of thing makes me a psychic. But what makes me also a medium, psychic medium, is that I see spirits. So how do they come through? It's usually a pop. They pop in. Now, if you look at famous people like John Edward, Tyler, the Hollywood medium, <clears throat> and all the others out there, what they all agree with is that when a spirit comes in, it's a pop. It's a pop. They don't generally come through and stay for hours and hours. Some of them stay a few minutes. Some of them it'll be seconds. So they give us pertinent information in that pop. Like it could be names. It could be something that they associate to us. Like a spirit, um, spirit came through to me once and she was showing me a turtle. So I said to the client, My, she, she's showing me a turtle. And she said, well, her name was Myrtle. So they show us these similarities instead of just talking because it takes a lot of energy to come through and actually talk to us. 
So they show us things, like they'll show us their favorite flower, or they'll show us something that we own, so then we associate them to as evidence, okay? So if you look at like John Edward, <clears throat> he sits there at his shows and he says, I've got a lady here, her name is Julie, Jeannie, Joni, Jenny. Because what we hear in here, or it could be in our head, it's a pop. So I'll use the name Samantha. Sometimes they pop in and they'll say, my name is Samantha. So you've got to think of that as six syllables. My name is Samantha six syllables but sometimes that pop can only be like four syllables my name is sa uh, uh. so you'll hear the uh, uh. so we have to sit there okay so we've got two syllables because that's their energy going back okay so it wasn't a, it wasn't a um extended pop in it's very quick okay so we sit there and we think okay it's sa uh, uh. So we might go through Sonali, Sanjiani, or whatever, until we say, okay, we've got somebody here, their name is Sa. Uh, uh. So that's what John Edward does. He gets the same information like I get, okay? So that's why at his shows, he'll sit there and he'll say, oh, I've got a lady here. Her name is Jeannie, Johnny, Joni, Je Jenny, because he's heard the je e je e so he knows it's two syllables. So that's why he asked the audience, okay? So that explains why he does that. And that's how I know that he is a genuine medium, okay? <clears throat> Ghosts, on the other hand, they can hang around for years, decades, okay? My neighbor, Roy, he was about 83 when he passed, and that was about five years ago. He is still in his house next door. In my book, Ghosts, The Psychology of Why They Stay, which is coming out in a few weeks, by the way, in that book, I explain all this, the things that he has been able to do in the last five years since he's died. Not only can he turn on his lights, he can turn on his TV because his house was still furnished because he didn't have a will and it was in probate. So his house stood vacant for about five years. <clears throat> he could be seen at the window. So many times I'd look out my back door and I'd see him standing in his kitchen. I could hear him at night tinkering in his kitchen, moving pots and pans like he was making his dinner. Okay. So Roy has stayed he is what we call a ghost. He is, to me, the classic example of what ghosts can do, okay? Spirits can come through and they can give us a little breeze. So our hair will go in a breeze. They can sit next to us so we feel their energy there like someone's sitting there, okay? They can come through and they can send us messages like feathers falling from the sky. They'll let us find things like dimes, the American 10 cent piece. They'll put things into our awareness so then we know it's a message from them. Okay? So even like songs. <clears throat> just say your grandmother had a favourite song. I'll just go there with the Beach Boys. Okay? She like... Um, a speech boy song so when you she wants you to know that she's around you'll hear this beach boy song or you'll just hear it in your head and you think my god I've been hearing this song in my head all day the beach boys that was my grandmother's favorite song so they can do those sort of things with a ghost they can do far far worse or better whichever way you look at it ghosts can move things around because if you look at the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze, these ones <clears throat> use their energy. <clears throat> Just bear with me. Okay, I talk all day, remember, okay? 
and it's now 7 30 p.m at night so my oh my voice is starting to go okay so ghosts can use their energy to move things okay spirits can still come through but they don't generally move things they make things appear like the feathers and the coins and other things and they can also stop clocks electrical devices so they can make our lights quicker they can turn on and off the tv because it's still using that energetic frequency of their consciousness okay so ghosts can actually move things around and let us know that they're here something else that ghosts and spirits both can do is ring us on the telephone let me tell you some stories <clears throat> my grandmother died back in 2003 I think it was 2002 2002 2001 oh gosh can't remember the day time and me don't really do good together okay because I was five years in heaven where there's no time okay so I was walking through the Maya Center which is a big busy mall in the right in the heart of the Brisbane city I was walking through there on my lunch break and my phone rang I used to have one of those old Motorola flip phones and on the front it had a little square with diamantes around it and it would light up and flash when I had a call coming in so my phone rang I looked at it and on the dial on this little square pad it said Nan crazy because a nan did not have a mobile phone two she was not in my contacts so why did it come up as nan and not uncalled unknown caller and three she died three days before so i'm looking at my phone you know it was a little motorola flip so it was only about this big and i'm looking at the word nan across it so i flipped it up and i pressed the little phone button and I said hello and it was my grandmother she said how are you dear I said I'm good Nan how are you because I recognized her voice <clears throat> and she said I've got a message for your mum now my mum is her daughter because she's my grandmother right she said I've got a message for your mum please ring her and tell her that tomorrow the funeral home's ringing at 10 o'clock in the morning and everything is going to be okay so I said Nan how are you where are you I'm asking 10,000 questions she said oh, I've got to go now dear and the phone went dead I hung up the phone and you know the weird thing it was in my call log that I had spoken for about 50 seconds but there was no number there it was unknown number huh huh how does that work so I rang my mum I said mum I hope you're sitting down because Nan just rang me <sighs> my mum didn't really believe it is <laughs> <It's> an understatement <laughs> <clears throat> so I said to her mum you've got to be home at 10 o'clock tomorrow the funeral home's ringing so she said oh I can't I've got an appointment in the morning I said well she's ringing um, the funeral home's ringing at 10 so the next day at about four o'clock in the afternoon I get a phone call and it's my mum she said what did you do Linda you set this up didn't you you rang the funeral home didn't you I said mum I don't even know which funeral home how would I know this information you're the one organizing the funeral and she said well they didn't ring at 10 they rang at 10 um two minutes past 10 10 02 is when they rang to me that's close enough okay so my grandmother she passed away and she went to heaven she's a spirit okay but she could still ring me so now we go to Roy so Roy's house was vacant for five years after he passed away about five years ago I've seen him heaps people were here for parties people were here just for coffees they'd see him in the house they'd hear him in the house okay so this one day 
I had my neighbour across the road. She came over for coffee. And we looked over the fence and his back door was standing open because there had been squatters going inside. And I said to her, Ali, her name was Ali. I said, Ali, we've got to go over and secure the door. Um, so all I used to do was put a rag in there and shut the door and leave, okay? I, I didn't go in there that, that often. So we went over and we secured the door with this rag so it wouldn't open again. And as we're coming home, Ali said, oh, I'm going to go home now too. So she went back to her house. And as I came into my house, my phone rang. And it actually did come up as unknown caller. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll answer this. And I answered it. Hello, this is Linda. <clears throat> An old man on the phone. Hello, Linda. And as soon as he said that, I remembered his voice. This is a man for two years I was having coffees with over the back fence. This is a guy for two years. I spoke to him every day. I drove him to the shops. I drove him to the hospital. So I knew his voice very well. <clears throat> so he, <clears throat> poor man, he rang and he said, hello, Linda. And I said, Roy, how are you, darling? And he said, I'm fine, but I'm just wondering if you're still here. Are you still here? I said, no, darling. I'm not at your house now. I've come home. And he said, oh, okay. Thank you for that. Bye. Hung up the phone. So I've still got that. It's a 16-second um, phone on my phone log. So that photo of that phone log is in my new book about ghosts, the psychology of why they stay. So Nan rang me. And so did my neighbour Roy, spirit and a ghost. So they can come through and play with electrical devices, both of them. <clears throat> they can come through with their messages and let us know that they're still around. And if you're very lucky, you can even get a photo of a ghost. Now, if you looked at the thumbnail for this video, I was over at the Tawong Cemetery one night doing a ghost tour. <clears throat> Hello. Oh, I always love wearing my ghost shirts, right? I was there with a friend of mine called Fraser. And the, the tour guide, she says, oh, we've got this very haunted place down the back. Who wants to go down there? I'm right there. I said, I'll go first. So Fraser and I walked down and I took... We're standing at this field, probably half an acre, and she was explaining there could be anything up to 200 bodies just dumped in this field. So I thought I'll get my camera out, and I took a photo from the right to the middle and to the left. Prior to this part, I'd taken heaps of photos of people standing next to tombstones, clicking, 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 just in case I got something. So. Then other people came down and I'm taking more photos and then we go up to this other place and I'm taking more photos. So we're at this tomb of this boring, was what I thought, <clears throat> some famous person from history and I thought, oh my God, I don't want to hear the story of who this person was. I'm just going to sit here while she's talking about this person and I'll flick through my camera roll. I got photo, 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 photo and then it was black 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 and then there was more photos with people standing next to tombstones doing the ghost hunt wow what was that so when I got home I put them onto the computer because I thought Geez, this is weird there's three photos there <clears throat> and I could see something so I sent them over to a friend of mine by the name of Rick and I said, mate, can you lighten these up and just see what's in there? So not only have I now got the three photos, these are authenticated. They are real ghost photos. So the photo that I took to the right, there he is. You can see glasses. He's got frames. You can see nose hair. You can see teeth, his beard. You can see his ear, you can see his other eye. The photo to the middle is this one. 
So now we can see that he's got glasses on. You can see his eyes, nose, ear. You can see his teeth. You can see his beard. And there's nothing below him. It's white noise. The same with the previous one. It's white noise. No body. That's a bit weird. Then the last photo. <clears throat> so I took right, centre, left. Here's the one from the left. So now we can clearly see his glasses. We can see that they're broken and he's got some sort of trauma here to the side of his head. We can see his beard, but no body. So who was this man? I rang the cemetery and I said, I'm looking for a man aged around 30 to 50 years old. He wore glasses, so he's obviously from the 1910 forward. How many people have you got of that demographic? She said, I'll ring you back. She said, we've got over 3,000 people that fit that demographic. So it could be anybody. But I know that he's a ghost because he showed up in three photos that night. One, two, three. So I use these photos. It's going to be the front cover of my book. So it, I love getting him out there because this is proof that ghosts are real, correct? Okay. So basically, spirits go home. They can't appear like this. Okay. They don't appear to us like that. It's a pop where it's like a TV screen comes up and we see them. Okay. They can't physically manifest into something that we can physically see, okay? And that's why you'll, you'll get like a wind or you'll feel just that paranoia, which we can also get with ghosts, by the way, okay? So in my book, I'm going to explain all the, all the empirical evidence that we can get, like walking through cobwebs, etc., when we're out on a ghost tour, okay? So tonight's video was basically... What is the difference between a ghost and a spirit? Please subscribe. Please press the notifications because I'm going to start doing more ghost, pardon me, more ghost stories, more heaven stories. Okay. If you're interested in a copy of my ghost and uh, my heaven book, here it is. Look how thick it is. That's me. I'm on the back. There's me. Okay. That's when I died, went to heaven. So I know what spirits are. Okay. Because I explained it in my book. Okay. It's available on Lulu and the link is below if you do want a copy. Okay, hard copy or a PDF version, which is cheaper by the way. Okay, so the ghost book is coming out in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> I've got to rest my voice. I talk all day, as you know. Um, yeah, if you do have questions, please email me. My email is below. If you do have um, topics that you want me to discuss, okay, because I've got over 50 years in this field. Um, and I've been an NDE for over 20 years now. So I've got a lot of experience, research behind me. Why do you think I've got a PhD? Okay. So if you do have questions, please email me. And if you wanted me to do a video on it, that's fine. Okay. So hope you're all having a good night. And I'll talk to you all again soon. Okay. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.